Good morning. I'm Steve Porch, pastor here at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I want to welcome you to worship today. I want to share with you a special opportunity that you have uh, coming through the season of Advent. As you can see, we're trying to get ready for Advent and Christmas around here. Um, this special opportunity is a chance to go through um, a daily reading uh, starting tomorrow, November 30th, uh, through Christmas Eve, um, called The Christian New Year by J.D. Walt uh, from Seedbed Daily Text. Um, this daily reading is available in this book, but it's also available if you subscribe to the Seedbed Daily Text. Uh, you can get it on email or on Facebook. If you'll go to seedbed.com uh, and subscribe to the daily text, you can get the daily readings. And then twice a week on Sunday evenings at 7 and on Wednesday evenings at 6, we're going to share a video via Zoom uh, from J.D. Walt and then have a time of discussion uh, about the video and about the readings as we prepare ourselves for the Christian New Year. That, guess what? starts today, the first Sunday of Advent. Um, if you need information on this, contact me um, at the email below or call the church office and I'll be happy to share with you the Zoom links. Um, and that first Zoom meeting starts tonight as we preview video one and get ready for the series. Um, I hope you'll join us as we journey toward Christmas and start the Christian New Year. Once again, I'm glad that you're here to worship with us today. If you will, join me in this call to worship. Your responses will be on the screen. Rip open the sky. Make planes divert their flight paths. Tell the mountains to duck. And Jesus rush in to this sanctuary. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come and silence the violence. Stop stray bullets that kill the innocent. Expose dealers who peddle addictions. Make your enemies know you and tremble in your presence. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We may fail to notice your presence in everyday living, in casual conversations, or in blessings disguised as coincidences. Still we cry together, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you have promised to be with us no matter what difficult circumstances invade our lives. And we lift up our many brothers and sisters in Christ who are facing increasingly hard times. We are watching and waiting for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ and join with the Spirit in praying, Come, Lord Jesus, come. In these increasingly difficult times, we ask for your strength and courage to face whatever lies ahead, knowing that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us and that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Speaking of Advent, who doesn't like Advent? It's a season of excitement and anticipation and joy. Lots and lots and lots of joy. Even when we acknowledge that we aren't ready for it. Ready for what is coming or for the realm that is promised or for the kingdom that we hope for. There's still joy. We admit that we have fallen short. We confess that we're wrapped up in ourselves and, and in things that don't last. We admit that our watchful waiting has fallen by the wayside and yet in this season, there is joy. We have a sense that we can start all over again because company is coming. Advent sits in the nexus between the past and the future, and the origin of the season is to remind us that, that we're heading somewhere, that we're waiting for something that, 
that isn't here yet. We are reminded that we are a pilgrim people during the season of Advent. And as startling as that might be, we find joy in, in the seeking, joy in the longing, joy in the waiting. The prophecies are full of warning and of struggle, but, but there's also a resounding vision of something greater, something of peace. And we can lean into that. There's a joy in the remembering. We, we can't look forward to the inbreaking of the one who comes without looking back to the first time God entered our history and space. Yes, Advent is more than a countdown to Christmas. It is a, a reenactment of the, the, the coming of Christ that prepares us for the return of Christ. It is a remembering of the way the world was turned upside down when the when the child was born. That, that we can have an inkling of the riding of the world when the Savior reclaims all that belongs to the kingdom of God. There is joy in that anticipation, in the waiting for the one who, who comes, both as we look back and as we lean forward. The joy erupts not because it will be an easy welcome, because there's work to be done and transformation to occur. Our brokenness will come to light and our healing will stretch our capacity to hope. But the joy is there because deep down we know that what is coming is what we have been longing for. Who is coming is who we have been longing for. So join us in this Advent because company's coming. You know, Marie and I have a favorite uh, recipe. We used to cook it all the time. It's called Company's Coming Chicken. And, and we used it uh, when we found out somebody was coming over because it was a fairly easy recipe to make. It made quite a bit of food. And, and, and you could get the ingredients. If you didn't have them already, you could get them real quick and put it together. And we used it when people were sick or people had babies and we were taking food to their homes because because it was it was uh, easy to prepare it all. It's called Company's Coming Chicken. Chicken and rice and cream of mushroom soup and bacon. Oh, and it was good. So friends, I invite you to join me through this time of Advent for this Company's Coming series. A recipe prepare for the coming of the Christ child.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. If ever there was a year we needed um, Advent, this is the year. It's hard to even describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right, nothing seems like it used to be, nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known, so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through this mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We like this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you will still see us though we feel lost in the rubble. Let this light guide us and bring us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive friends. Hello. Good to be with you. Here we are. I'm with my friends, and we're joining you and your friends and your congregation, wherever you are in this world. Um, we're joining our hearts together to worship our God. And uh, what a year it's been. What a difficult year, difficult circumstances. And regardless of what this past year has been for you, uh, let's turn our hearts, turn our eyes, turn our hope towards the Lord in the season of hope. And God, we do that right now. We turn our eyes to you, Jesus. And uh, I just encourage you, wherever you're at, if you would sing along with us. Jesus, we adore you. Now we adore 
Kids, good morning. It's good to be with you today. Yeah, you're in my office and this is my desk. Well, there's a desk under here, I promise. I, 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 there is. You may not be able to see it right now, but there is a desk under all this stuff. Has, has your mom ever come into your room and said, Man, this place looks like a pigsty? A pigsty? Do you know what a pigsty is? It's where a pig lives, and it's pretty nasty. Well, guess what? My office kind of looks like a pigsty, doesn't it? This place is a mess. Oh, you know, sometimes it's just not my, my priority to get it all cleaned up. But guess what? I, I got a message the, day, the other day that I have a special visitor coming, um, and so I might have to clean it up. 
who's that special visitor? Is it my district superintendent, my boss? Nah, he might be coming, but I, I probably wouldn't clear off the desk for him. Is it um, my, my friend Zeke from, from uh, uh, over at Kavanaugh uh, Methodist Church, the pastor over there? Well, he's a good friend, but I probably wouldn't clean off my desk for him. Oh, I know. It's the bishop, the top dog in all of Arkansas Methodist churches. He's the main dude. You know what I'm talking about? No, he's not coming to see me either. Well, then, who is my special guest? Well, you'll just have to wait and find out, won't you? But you know what? I think if a real special guest was coming, we'd probably do stuff to get ready. If your mom said, you know what? Your best friends are coming over, or your cousins are coming over, or your grandparents are coming over, and you don't want them to see your room like this, you'd probably have to clean up your room, wouldn't you? Well, you know what? Christmas is right around the corner. This week we start what's called Advent, and it's to help us get ready for Christmas. Um, and we're we're talking about somebody special coming at Christmas, um, and, and we just have to to get ready for that somebody special. You know who that somebody special is? That's right. It's the baby Jesus, and we have to get ready to celebrate. And so we get ready by to celebrate by looking at our own lives and finding out where the mess is. And I'm not just talking about papers on our desk. I'm talking about all the things that clutter our lives and keep us from focusing on Jesus and Jesus' birth. You know, Christmas, we got a lot of exciting things going on. We get really busy at times. We want to decorate the tree. We want to decorate the house. We have presents to buy. We have Christmas lists to make. We have cookies to eat and pies to bake. Um, man, there's a lot going on at Christmas. And so if we want to really be ready for Jesus to come and to come into our hearts, we have to look around us and say, what's standing in the way of Jesus coming into my life? What makes me too busy? What makes me not see him? So today, we're looking at the places that are kind of messy and knowing that Jesus is on his way. We got to get prepared. Now, what can we do to get prepared? We can start praying and praising and singing and looking and clearing out some of the things that are cluttered. I don't need this JB weld on my on my desk, I'll put it down in the drawer. That's a start, and we gotta start somewhere. Getting ready for Jesus, because Jesus is coming. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and sending us Jesus. Help us get ready by cleaning up our rooms and our lives and our schedules to make sure that we see him this Christmas. Amen. All right, we'll see you next week. Don't forget, start cleaning up and getting ready for Jesus. Bye-bye. Let's pray. Lord, pour your spirit out today so that my words will carry your message and that all of our ears will be open to hear them, our hearts to receive them, and our lives to be transformed by them. Amen. Well, it's the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the, the Christian New Year, and, and that means one thing for sure, Christmas is almost here. 
and we're not ready. We're, we're not even close to ready. The greenery and the lights are not up. The tree's up, but the Christmas aren't on it. I, I mean, it, it, this place is a mess. And I wonder, how did it get here so fast? We've got work to do. A lot of work to do. You wonder how it could sneak up on you like that. I mean, even with so much going on, it's like Dave Ramsey of Financial Peace University used to say, how does Christmas sneak up on anybody? It comes the same day every year. And yet, if you admit it, I guarantee you, you're saying the same thing. It can't be time for this already. It's too early. There's too much to do. And instead of growing shorter, our, our to-do lists are, are growing longer. And so we panic. And we get frantic. And we have anxiety attacks because Christmas is almost here and we're not ready. And that's just with the material, physical part of our life. That's not even talking about our spiritual lives. And that's precisely why we need Advent. You know, the creators of the, the, the Christian calendar knew that, that we all would need a swift kick in the pants to get the new year started. So, so it begins with this call to get ready we find in Advent. Because... We're not ready. Worse than that, sometimes we forget, or at least we act like we forget, that there's really anything to get ready for. Or that, that we've thought that what we're supposed to be getting ready for is really just a, a celebration of something that happened in the past. I mean, we're preparing for a historical observation of something God did a long time ago. Yes, we're still defined by it. Yes, we, we're still grateful for it. And yes, okay, maybe we still try to live differently because of it. But it is to an extent in our minds old news, or so it often seems. Because when it comes right down to it, it's almost like a case of been there, done that many, many years in a row. And that's all there is to it. Where is it? You see, if Advent is really pointing to more than that, if it's really about a time of waiting for something else, then what is it that we are waiting for? What is it that we're looking for? The, the first scripture for this first Sunday of Advent from Isaiah 64 reminds us that what we long for, what, what we desire, what we hope for is not just a historical remembrance of something that happened a long time ago, but instead a new reality or a new encounter. And that this new encounter can be and maybe should be shocking like motorcycles going by. No, that's not shocking. It happens every time I record. But this new encounter is supposed to wake us up from, from overlooking what really surrounds us. Do you remember being sent to clean your room when you were a kid? And if so then you most likely remember that your first thought as you stumbled through the door and flopped onto the bed was that this looks good to me. I, I don't see anything wrong with this, right? Right? Never mind the pile of dirty clothes over there in the corner or the, the big stack of papers and books that are about to fall off the edge of the desk or, or that little Debbie wrapper from last night or the the bag of chips that you finished off a few days ago. It looks clean to me, right? 
or clean enough anyway, and besides, it's just going to get dirty again, so what's the point? Well, Isaiah comes along to ask us to take another look at our rooms, at our living spaces. And like our mom, Isaiah stands at the door and tells us that company's coming. And says, w would you take a look at the kind of squalor you're living in? I mean, it's a pigsty. What would happen if the one you claim to be waiting for, that special person, were to show up in your room today? What would happen if the, the one that you really want to come over and visit tore open the door right now and came charging into this room? What then, smart guy? That sounds like a mom, doesn't it? And of course, Isaiah's not talking about our bedrooms or our kitchens or even our sanctuaries. He's talking about our lives. Individually and collectively as the people of God, he's talking about our lives because sometimes we live like Jesus has never been here or that Jesus isn't coming back. Or maybe worse yet, that Jesus isn't even here right now. And so he cries out on our behalf. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. It's, it's almost like he's saying, we know you're real, we know you're present, our faith tells us that you are, but we're not really acting like it, so we need to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. We need you to shake us up a little bit so that we can be certain again, because we begin to wonder, we begin to doubt, we, we've, we've kind of gotten complacent, so Lord, look what you did in the past and do it again. Do it again. And that's where our historical observance comes into play. This is where telling the story becomes important. Not just so that we can look back with a sigh and, and, and long for the good old days. Not so that we can wish for the blessings that they had back in the day, but so that we can learn to recognize that and realize it when it comes again and when we're in its presence. And that, my friends, is the task of Advent. That's what Advent's supposed to do, is to call us to pay attention to what is and what will be, not simply to look back at what was. See, when Isaiah wrote, the people of God were in exile and the, the foundations of their nation had been shaken. The, the comforts that they had begun to take for granted had been taken away from them. And the human institutions that, that they had constructed no longer held the, the beloved security that they once held. Does that sound familiar to anybody in this COVID-stricken division-laden, seemingly hate-filled world which surrounds us. So the Israelites had begun to look elsewhere. And when they did, they realized, and Isaiah helped them realize, that, that their faith was shaky as well. They needed a boost. So what they do? They look back. They look back at what God had done in the past, and at the same time, they look forward to God doing it again in the future. They said, the mountains of our society were shaken at one time, so shake them again, O Lord. The foundations of our nation were shaken at one time, so shake them again, O God. You know what they needed? They needed a good old-fashioned, Advent-style 
wallop right upside the head. Pow! Because they said, we remember how it used to be. We remember how you used to deal with us. And, and we kind of like it to be that way again. The words almost seem like they were reminding God, don't they? But in reality, they were reminding themselves. And their look back wasn't just to give them a warm, fuzzy feeling about what, what once was, but it was a way to spur them on to live differently so that it might experience God's presence again. Through Isaiah, we see that they had looked at the world around them, and then they looked inwardly at their very own nation, and they realized, this place is a mess. It's a mess. A hopeless, apathetic, complacent, distracted, chaotic mess that is in need of a good swift kick in the pants. In a sense, Advent is supposed to be for us that kick in the pants. That prophet on the mountaintop, that, that mom in the doorway, that reminder to stir us out of our slumber, out of our sense of complacency, out of our mess. Advent is intended to be the two by four that we need to wake us up. And as scary as that sounds, at the very same time, it's also supposed to be a reminder of and a call to hope. It's the dreaded warning. Oh crap, company's coming. We've got a lot to do to get ready. But it comes with the great news. That company's coming. And the company is special. And we got to get ready. Now, believe it or not, that is also the call that is in our, our, our passage from the Gospel of Mark this week. And, and it's more than just a word of warning. It's a, it's a call to hope. Now, sometimes we, we have to listen real closely to, to hear something hopeful in these passages, but, but it's there. It's there. And so listen for the promise of hope that lies underneath and in the urgent cry to stay alert and remain awake in Mark 13. I'll be reading for you today verses 24 through 27 and then 33 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering... The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Beware. Keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Does that make you nervous a little bit? I mean, just a little? Does it make? Yeah, it's... Because it's kind of like Christmas. There's a lot to do to get ready. But there's an unknown deadline to meet. You don't know when it's going to happen. And you still have a lot to get ready. And so it makes you a little bit nervous. A little bit scared. 
But at the very same time, there's hope. Because there is the promise that the master is coming back. There's a promise that the master is near. There's the promise that you will not be left alone. The master's coming back, and it's not a threat. It's not a threat. It's a promise. Because there's joy when the master is home. It's the promise that, that we are not alone. It's the promise that what we see all around us is not all there is. It's the promise that there is more than what we are experiencing right now. That history is heading somewhere. That we, we may not know exactly where, except that it's someplace we call the kingdom of heaven. And we pray that the kingdom will be here as well as there. It's a destination. It, it's, it, it's something that Jesus was fond as, uh, of describing as life itself. True life. The abundant life. The joyful life. And, and that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're longing for in the end, right? Life. Life in all of its fullness and all its meaning. Life in all of its joy and all of its promise. And that's what we hear is that it's coming. That's what's coming. That's what's promised. That's where Advent is trying to lead us. And why we can have hope. And in the midst of our mess, we often forget that there's more. We even forget that we're looking for anything more, or that we're hoping for anything more, or that we even need anything more. We get so distracted, so, so complacent, so satisfied with the status quo, and, and unfortunately so content to live in our, our generally self-made, frequently world-enhanced, commonly overlooked squalor that like those Febreze commercials state we become nose blind to the pigsties in which we live we can't smell it we can't smell it that is until Advent comes and knocks us upside the head with a not so subtle reminder that he's coming that's when we look and we see that this place is a mess. This place is a mess. This place is a mess. And we realize that we need to do something about it. Because company's coming. Company is coming. And so in the name of the company that's on his way. I call you to this time of confession because the cares of this life weigh us down and we seek escape more than insight. We seek avoidance rather than confrontation with God's truth. God comes to us even when we are hiding from the, the best we know. God waits to hear our story and to restore us to life as it's meant to be. Let us come to God in prayer. Join with me. We confess, O oh God, that our sense of anticipation has been dull. We have ceased to expect any wonders from your hand. We do not see the marvels around us in the people and happenings we view as commonplace. We are not alert to your presence or your action on our behalf. Wake us up, God, lest sleep be our death. Pardon and redeem us that we may escape the judgment we are bringing on ourselves. Send your light that it may shine through us into a needy world. In the name of the baby that will come, Jesus our Savior. Amen.
Yes, a baby will come. Our Savior is coming. And this place is a mess. We've got work to do for when company arrives. Let us go and prepare our hearts, our homes, and our world for the coming of company. Amen.